Hello YouTube, Reseller Mom here. Welcome to today's video. Today is the 27th of December and I wanted to do, to do a video on how I got ungated in Squishmallows this week and the email that Amazon sent out about that. So welcome today. I hope everybody's having a great day. I got a new webcam so hopefully I will be able to do some videos like this where I'm able to uh, be in the picture as well as going through some slides. So that was a great Christmas present from my hubby. Let's get going here. First up, I've got these notes both at the beginning and the end of this video because I feel like this is important information that gets missed. I don't know. I don't know. So I felt it needed repeating twice. So what I'm going to show you is how I got approved and the start to finish of how I did that, exactly how I did that. And while it's getting me ungated to sell Squishmallows on Amazon, both FBA, FBM, it does not give me authorization from the brand. Okay, so this is for if you wanna get ungated with something, this is not an IP complaint. You can still get IP complaints even if you get authorization from Amazon to sell that product. It does not mean that you have brand authorization. I cannot say that enough. The other thing I wanna just really, really repeat, and I'll repeat it again at the end, is this exact way, I have seen people on, on the forums that have used exact ways and sometimes it get approved and sometimes it doesn't get approved. So if it does not work, what I suggest is to change something up, change up the highlighting, change up the annotation, see why it got denied if you can. Sometimes you, you do get a little bit of feedback, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you can call Amazon and say, you know, I'm trying to figure out why this was denied. Is there anything in the notes? And sometimes the whoever's seeing it on the other end will write notes like the address didn't match up, match up or something. And then you know what to fix. But I have, I have heard countless stories of people submitting the same exact paperwork verbatim for both IP complaints, for authorization, for, you know, ungating, etc., and get approved and denied with the same exact thing. So just because it worked for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And Amazon is always changing, always changing. So everybody that I know that sells Squishmallows got this email this week. And basically this is when the back end of it is the brand or something triggered a lockdown on the brand Squishmallows, whether that was a whole bunch of returns, Squishmallow reaching out to Amazon, um, maybe they were just looking at category, categorizations with high uh, authenticity problems. I don't know. We're not going to know, but that you get an email like this and it says, you know, you're getting this email because you have, or you have sold Squishmallows and effective the 24th, which is the day they sent this. Uh, it might've been the 23rd. So either the 23rd or the 24th, it was not a lot of lead time. They locked down the brand. Now, sometimes they'll give you like two weeks, which is great. You can sell out of your product or go ahead and, and get authorized, etc., and um, get approval. But this was within 48 hours, if not 24 hours, they were going to shut down or lock down the Squishmallow product. So at the end of the email, it did not show me which items I had. So I had to go into Amazon, into my inventory, type in the word Squishmallow and see what products I still had there. And if you don't plan on sw selling Squishmallows again, you could just delete out your product. You can uh, liquidate it. You can have it sent back to you, whatever you want to do with it. But basically it will go in your fixed stranded inventory if you don't do anything and then you'll have to do something with it you'll have to remove it liquidate it something if you don't get approval to sell it so the next thing i did was i went over to good old google and i typed in squishmallow wholesale and i tell you i do this for a lot of things and have quite a bit of luck finding places. The other keywords you could type in is Squishmallow distribution places, um, wholesale toy stores. The first thing I did was I actually went to EE Distribution and Shepherd because those are my two toy stores that are great for ungating in a lot of toy brands, but neither of them 
had anything that I could get and was also over on Amazon that I was locked out of. They had some, there's another Squishmallow product. I can't remember what the name of it was, but it's like little miniature Squishmallows um, that were over on EE distribution, but they weren't, they weren't locked out. So they're pretty open. They did not get part of this lockdown. So I scrolled down just a bit until this one caught my eye, T-O-Y-N-K.com, and went ahead and started investigating that place. The T-O-Y-N-K website was not the first website that I selected, but it was the first one that I came across that looked like it was going to work, and it, and it did. So um, the other websites and pretty much any new website that I ever come across that I'm thinking about using, I do a couple of things. I will type in the website name and click our website plus reviews and look at the reviews for the website and look for things like this is a scam, this is a fly by night, they stole my money, they didn't ship my items, any sort of red flags that you'd want to stay away from. And then there's also other website checkers that you can enter in the website name to see if it's a legit or a scam or et cetera website. I got into this habit after being on an OA list that the VA would constantly put on, at the beginning, at the beginning, uh, would put on a lot of websites on the OA sheet that, that were not good and they were bad. And I had my credit card information stolen twice. And after that, you know, I have learned my lesson. So uh, do whatever you, you know, whatever your process is, but always make sure that your website has been checked out by another reseller or at least the reviews and a website checker are good. So for this one, I did type in the name and typed in reviews and it seemed all pretty good. They, most of the people were happy with their orders, which means they got their orders and it was legit. So um, definitely check that out. So once I am in the website, that I'm trying to check out, I will go to the search bar, I type in Squishmallow, and just a little tidbit, type in Squishmallow without the S because a lot of the titles aren't going to have the S, and depending on how the search algorithms work, if you put the S in your search, it may not pop up without the S. So I, I don't know, sometimes you'll get both, but a lot of times I just leave off the S um, to make sure that I'm getting, getting all of the searches that I can. The next thing I do immediately on most websites is change the sort by from price or from whatever it is. Usually it's like best match to price from low to high, especially when I'm looking for things like this. If I need to buy 10 of these guys or however many to make 10 ASINs, I'm multiplying my cost by 10 and I really don't want to spend anything more because this is all about getting the ungate. If if I just solely just have mini ma or whatever squishmallows sitting around my house or whatnot, or give them away for free, maybe to a toy drive or something, I want it to cost the least amount and I'm paying just for that ungate. So I want to spend the least amount of money. Now you can maybe search for things that are both uh, lucrative and get you ungated, but that's not the intent of this. This is the intent of just getting ungated in squishmallow and uh, you're going to have to sell this product. You can sell it on Amazon. Once you get your Squishmallows, if you get ungated, you can sell it on Amazon. If not, always have an exit plan. Be selling it on eBay. Give it to a toy donation. Um, Facebook marketplaces. You know, give it out as gifts for Christmas or birthday parties. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. But always have an exit. Because at the end of the day, this may work. It may not. But do not try and return them if, if at all possible. What happens in the Amazon community is when information like this gets out, if people abuse it, then they will make it so that you can't abuse it or use it, etc. And that's how some things get ruined. So don't, don't be a jerk and buy a bunch and then try to return it and, and be that person. <laughs> okay. So once I got a price from low to high, I'm going to go through each one and see what's the cheapest Squishmallow that I can get ungated with out there. The first one here is a blind capsule. Stay away from blinds. They're hard to match up. They're confusing for both you, the buyer, for Amazon. A lot of times they come in two or three packs. So once you multiply your 
your numbers by two or three. It's not going to be as cheap as one of these other ones. And they're hard to match up. So if you're confused about it and your customer's confused, the person at Amazon is going to be confused. And you need to make this like cookie cutter, can't screw up easy for the rep on the other end of the screen. The next one up here is Squishmallow 5 inch Bridget the Pink Tulip. So I typed into Amazon, just the regular Amazon page, regular Amazon, Squishmallow 5 inch Bridget the Pink Tulip. Didn't come up. The next one, Jackie the Purple Tulip, didn't come up. The third one, Maui the, Pina Ugh, Maui the Pineapple did, and I was pretty excited. I was like, ooh, we're getting pineapples. But I went to go click on this one to buy it, and there was only like two available. So I couldn't buy all 10. Now you can do like two here, three here, and add up to 10, but usually you want to do 10 of one ASIN. Um, I'm sorry, you can't do that. You need to do 10 of one ASIN. You can do multiple brands in the same order. So let's say this place also had... Um, My Little Pony and you wanted to get My Little Pony and Squishmallow, you could put those on the same invoice. I like to do things very separate because it's very clean and doesn't get messed up and, and uh, you know, it's, it. you can do it, but uh, I don't know. I don't. So the next one that I came across was Minnie Mouse and this is what I wound up getting. I bought 10 of these and what I did was I went over to Disney sorry, went over to Amazon, typed in Disney Squishmallow. Actually, I left off Disney. I just did Squishmallow Minnie Mouse and found the listing. So Squishmallow Minnie Mouse 8 inch. The 8 inch is very important. Squishmallows get sold by the inch and they have a uh, 6, 6, 8, 10, 12. It's always even numbers. Uh, let's see here, 12 inch, 14 inch, 18 inch, 16 inch, 24 I want to say even 36s, but I don't I don't sell those very often. I don't think I've ever sold the 36 inch one, 24 once in a while. But uh, regardless, I'm going to type in that. The inches are very important in Squishmallow. And there are two listings right here on the left that look like they're the exact same product, just two different ASINs. And the one on the far right is the 14 inch, and the one third in is the red one. So we don't want the red, we don't want the 14 inch. Of the two over here, one says exclusive Disney 2021 squad. And so I don't know if I'm buying the exclusive Disney 2021 squad. So I went ahead and used the first ASIN to match up. Your product needs to match up exactly. So I don't want the rep on the other end to be like, hmm, I'm looking for some exclusive Disney 2021 uh, name in the paperwork and I don't see that so I'm going to deny them. Don't want to do that. So over here this first one the it matched up exactly and the next thing I'm going to do is take that ASIN and make sure it's the one I need to apply for. Uh, the other Squishmallows that I was thinking of I can't remember what they're called again but they're the little ones that are grouped up at the stores. They I don't have to apply for them it says I can sell it like new so uh, don't buy something that you don't have this apply to sell button. <laughs> gotta, gotta take care of the basics here. When you click on that apply to sell button, you're going to get this page right here and you're going to hit request approval. And that's where if it just went through automatically, that'd be an auto ungate. This one was not. It said you need to request approval and submit documents. Now it says one purchase invoice for the products from a manufacturer or distributor. And because my paperwork did not say invoice, I thought I was gonna get this kicked back. So take what I'm sharing with you, word of caution. It does not say invoice, so it may not work, but it did, it worked for me. So I hope it works for you. Next thing I'm gonna do is pay attention to all of these, all of these lines right here. I cannot stress that enough, my goodness. It has to be dated after June 27th. It needs to include your name, your address, matching the information on your seller account. So if your name is different, your address is different, it's not it's not gonna go through, period. It doesn't matter how good of a the rest of the invoice is, these basics have to match up. It needs to have the name and address of the manufacturer. Mine did not, but I put it in there, I annotated it and put it in there, so it was added. 
And I can guarantee you that if I had not done that, then it would not have gone through. Show the combined purchase of at least 10 units. So if you are, let's see here, this is pretty common in grocery and beauty, but if you have a two pack and who you're buying it from is a single pack, but Amazon's ASIN is a two pack, you need to buy 20 total units to show that you bought 10 of the ASIN you are applying for. That's why I like to look for singles because it's usually cheaper. Omit pricing information optional. I have not omitted pricing information over five years. If yours got kicked back, you could try doing that though. That's one way to change up your invoice and resubmit it and uh, try to get it approved again. Please note that we may verify your documentation by contacting the vendors. They do call vendors. They don't call everyone, but they do call and identify and talk to vendors periodically. So it needs to have a legit phone number on there and you know, contact information it has to be a legit supplier. The file types that they accept is PDF, DOCX, PNG, uh, GIF, and JPEG. The minimum, maximum file size needs to be 10 megs. If your file size is over 10 megs, resize it.net. So I think, yeah, I think it's a .net. Resize it. .net will, you can uh, shrink files down pretty easy with that. I love, love, love that. I increase sizes and decrease sizes for Amazon all the time with resize.net. It's one of my go-to websites. I work in PDF most of the time. My second go-to would be PNG or JPEG. When you are annotating your document, whatever software you want to use, go for it. Uh, it doesn't really matter. As long as the end file is in one of these and it's under 10 megs, it does not really matter. So once I made the purchase and put it in my bag, um, I got a little free gift. I unlocked free shipping. What I didn't do was I didn't sign up for their beginner email and get 10% off my first order. So I'm kind of kicking myself for that. I could have gotten 10% off, saved myself $15. I didn't, but hey, you can. The other thing that I did do though is my Rakuten got me back one or two percent. So at least I saved a couple dollars there that I'll get back. So I've got 10 items in here. I went ahead and checked out. Now here is the tricky part, or at least it was sort of tricky. I don't know. It may not be tricky because I'm telling you how to do it, right? Once you make the order, and you can order mini mouses if you can. Uh, you can find a different Squishmallow if you're happy with a different Squishmallow. You can look around, maybe the pineapple sells for more money and is more desirable on eBay and Facebook so you can make your money back with that if it's available. Um, but once you make your purchase, you're gonna wanna go make an account with TOYNK Toys. So go ahead and, and make your account, log in and go to your orders and then click on the order. And this is what it looks like. Then from here, I right clicked and I hit print and I printed to PDF. That's how I did it. However you wanna do it, you do it your way. But to get the actual page that got submitted to Amazon, that's how I did it. I went to this page, I right clicked, print to PDF. And then I went into that PDF and I annotated it. And then I saved it as a PDF and that's what I submitted to Amazon and that's what got approved by Amazon. All right, so I did this order on the 23rd. It's the 27th. Um, it, well, we'll get to the dates in a minute here. Okay, so once I hit that, I noticed on that paperwork, I did not have the address. So to get T-O-Y and Toy NK's address, I typed in Toy NK address up into Google and I found their address. We're gonna put this into the paperwork in just a minute. I'm just showing you how I got it. A little, I probably should have had this slide a little after, but uh, I think you guys can follow along here. So now that I've got their address, I'm going to pop it into the PDF. So this is what the PDF looked like. This is page one on the left, page two on the right, and I've got page three right here, which is a whole lot of nothing going on, but I leave it into, you know, in the paperwork just so that they have it. So in page one, this is again in the PDF editor. I take my highlighter and I'm gonna highlight the date that they wanna see. I'm gonna highlight Disney Squishmallow 8 inch plus mini mouse. I'm going to annotate and add the ASIN right here. 
and you can write in, I should have written it, written in, wrote in, written in, ASIN colon and then the ASIN number right here, B098YPF67. So this is, I mean, spelled out for them. The person reviewing the paperwork knows exactly what to look for, where to go, etc. Over here on billing address and shipping address, I highlighted my name, address, and phone number, and that matches my Amazon account. It has to match, guys. Has to match. Down here, I could have highlighted the phone number. I don't think I highlighted the phone number, and I annotated, added in the address since it wasn't in all of this stuff here. The other paperwork that I use sometimes is my Gmail order confirmation and print that to PDF and do the same thing. Um, I felt this one was a little bit better. It doesn't say invoice. It would have been a lot happier if it said, here's your invoice up here. And that that would have made me more comfortable, but I had already made the purchase. So I was like, well, I'm gonna try submitting the paperwork anyways, right? You may as well try. And if it says no, try again, try a couple, three, four times, maybe six, seven times and see if you get it, if you've already made the purchase. Um, Let's see here. Okay. This is just the third page blown up showing the address here. And this is the last page. So my total PDF was three pages long. So in that document, I've made sure that the date was there. My name and address matching my selling information was there. I put the name and address of the manufacturer. I showed a combined purchase of at least 10. I did not omit pricing and that's fine. They have a phone number if they want to call and verify it. I name the file, always just something professional. This is order TNK, what, 1234 dash whatever, tnktoys.pdf. It was not over 10 megs, so that was fine. Sometimes in the comments section, I will put applying for brand ungate squishmallow, see combined purchase of 10 units for a two pack, so 20 units total, whatever you want. If, the, if you feel there's comments needed to be had, put the comments down here. I felt this was pretty straightforward, so I didn't feel like I needed any comments. You're gonna click each one of these, so you just click it and it will X out. I, I didn't take the screenshot after I X'd it out, but you guys can imagine an X right here. So I've got all X'd out, my PDF, my email address is right here. I always put my phone number because in the off chance that they need to call me, they can call me. Um, I think I've only had them call me like once and I can't remember what it was about. So don't worry about putting your phone number in there. And then you hit submit and you get this message. Thank you for applying decision date before December 31st. So I know they're pretty, they're probably pretty slammed this month. It is the, their busy time. They've had, they've had a rough couple of months here with Q4 and everything. And so you will get a response by whatever date they say. Sometimes they will email and say it's taking longer, but usually they're pretty good. Within a couple of days, I got this email saying that they are reviewing my application and it can, I can expect an update in two to three business days. Oops, so don't worry. Oh, goodness gracious, I'm, my mouse went crazy there. So don't worry if you get this email and they're just, they're still looking at your case, right? So a whole lot of nothing on this email. And then this morning I woke up to thank you for your application. Your request has been approved and you're permitted to sell this brand. Please allow 24 hours to process within the system. So I was doing the happy dance this morning. Let me tell you, I was really excited. Most of my Amazon case stuff comes in early Monday morning. I don't know why, but that's usually when I get most of my important Amazon communications is early Monday morning. Now, if you ever need to see that brand application and what's going on with it, you can go to your selling applications. Mine was called Squish, Squishmallows Branded and can see that I was approved. Every once in a while, I'll have something that I'm not approved for, or, you know, something that contradicts even after the 24 hours, they say, say it's in like three days time and I can't seem to list it. Um, I have had to take screenshots just like this and submit it with a case and going, you know, I was approved. You can see the case ID right here, what's going on and had to get that fixed. Amazon does have glitches and 
they have all sorts of glitches and problems. So uh, that's how you would do that if, if it doesn't seem to want to go through. Back to my notes though, just to reiterate that this does not give you authorization from the brand. It just gives you permission through Amazon. So I don't know why Squishmallows is locking down and if that's any indication that they will be coming through with IP complaints or, you know, contacting sellers and telling them to get off or anything, but uh, it's, it's not authorization from the brand. It is just authorization with Amazon. So you can still get IP complaints. And then again, this exact way could be approved. It could be denied. I'm here to try and help you guys. Truly, truly, I'm trying to help you guys. So this worked for me. And that's all I know. I, I can only tell you what has worked for me. And if it does not work for you and you've done exactly what I've told you to do, then go through and change up the annotations a little bit. Just something on that document that's a little bit different than what you sent in before and resubmit it and see if it will work. I have seen so many Facebook posts that, you know, people have submitted the same thing over and over and, you know, on, on whatever try it gets approved. So I hope this has helped you guys out. If it did help you out, give me a thumbs up. This, that helps my channel out. It's a way that you can tell me that uh, this is helping you out. And if you do get ungated with this method, go ahead and uh, leave a just you know leave a comment down below so that I can see that it helped you out. And if it did not get approved, I would like to hear about that too because, um, like I said, maybe it's working for me and it worked once and then it's not going to work. So then I would know to to and other people would know whether to try this out or not. So thank you guys and I hope everybody has a great day. Oops, let's see here if I can hit the right button.